Once upon a time, millions of bison thundered across the plains of North America. By the 1880s, they had been hunted to the brink of extinction. But the bison were actually saved by ranchers, and now you can find them on ranches all over the United States. Bison meat is touted as a leaner alternative to beef. It tastes a lot like beef, but many people say it's a little bit sweeter. I'm Charity Nebbe. On this episode of Iowa Ingredient, we'll meet a father-daughter team celebrating the historical and spiritual side of bison, while also providing a 100% grass-fed meat alternative. And Chef Ian Robertson from 801 Chop House in Des Moines will showcase both casual and elegant ways to prepare bison at home. All that and more coming up next on Iowa Ingredient. Funding for Iowa Ingredient has been provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. A grant from the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust. Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business. Located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines, details are at embassyclub.com. New Pioneer Food Co-op, offering local and organic groceries in Iowa City, Coralville, and Cedar Rapids. Everyone's welcome to shop the co-op, where local and organic isn't just a corner of the store, it's the cornerstone of everything they do. Iowa Community Foundations, an initiative of the Iowa Council of Foundations, connecting donors to the causes and communities they care about. For good, for Iowa, forever. Details at iowacommunityfoundations.org. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. By many different measures, the landscape in Iowa is the most altered of any state in the Union. Even 200 years ago, this land would have looked very different, with tall grass prairies, oak savannas, many small wetlands, and large herds of bison would have been a common sight. They were an essential part of the diet and culture of the Native Americans who lived here. There are still bison here, not roaming the prairies, but on ranches, and bison meat is gaining popularity. Maybe because it's a low fat, lower calorie alternative, or maybe because the ranchers love to tell us it's America's original red meat, and many Iowans are willing to give it a try. Hawkeye Buffalo Ranch is a small family farm located on 500 acres in Northeast Iowa. Designated as a heritage farm by the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship, its legacy dates back to 1854. I feel so grateful to be back in a place where I have this family farm and this, this history, uh, and we're connecting it to the future and the idea that we can live a healthier lifestyle, something that is closer to the earth. Um, and I think the mix of that every day means that, you know, even on the coldest, most miserable day when I have to go out and feed some hay and it's blizzarding, freezing rain and the wind is blowing, I still think, you know, this is still the best day at work compared to what I was doing before. Dan McFarland and his daughter Martha manage a growing herd of grass-fed bison on 350 acres of pasture and timber. Right now we've got um... 46 head plus the calves. Mm -hmm. And at one time, the most we ever had was about 65. And uh, we started out, we bought 11 head, and that worked out pretty well. And then we bought 15 calves out of Kansas, and that worked well. And then from there on, it just 
ballooned into that. The ranch offers scheduled tours to the public and sells its bison meat from a small store on the farm. Welcome everybody to Hawkeye Buffalo Ranch. My name is Martha. Um, my father Dan and I are the ones that run the place. And to get started on the tour today, I want to introduce everyone to one of the oldest buffalo or bison that we have here on the property. We begin the tour um, in our store where we have some uh, artifacts that people can look at. We talk about the history of the animal and just give you a little uh, bit of a sense of what the animals are like. And then we get into a wagon. Uh, the buffalo do not like to be in enclosures, so you will never find a buffalo in a barn. Um, they're out here in the pasture, and so we'll take you out uh, into the woods and uh, like I said, the buffalo uh, get corn uh, and they only get corn for the tours. If you were to walk out here on your uh, two feet, the buffalo would see you and they would turn and run away, but they know that the wagon means that they're gonna get some corn. So what they'll do is they'll come running on up and you take an ear of corn and you can feed them. Hawkeye Buffalo Ranch offers steaks, burgers, sticks, roasts, buffalo bacon, summer sausage, and four styles of jerky. All products are 100% grass-fed buffalo without growth hormones, stimulants, or antibiotics. Bison meat is lower in fat than beef and lower in cholesterol than chicken, making it a healthy alternative to these more commonly consumed meats. Buffalo is very much like beef. A lot of people will have a hamburger and they can't tell the difference. If you are someone who knows the difference between grass-fed beef and corn-fed beef, uh, the difference in bison is that you'll have that same grass-fed quality. Um, some people would say it has a slightly sweeter or a more earthy taste. We are a heritage farm. Uh, it's been in the family for over 150 years. My great-great-grandfather and grandmother first settled here um, just about a mile away. The McFarlands are proud of their product and like to share the history of buffalo with others. To look at them and they're so historic and uh, buffalo are not close to extinction anymore. At one time they were down to just a few hundred, but today there's probably 375,000 in North America. And uh, they're just a, an integral part of the land. Eight oh one Chop House is an upscale restaurant located in the heart of downtown Des Moines. It's known for its prime USDA beef and other dishes and wines from around the world. When they come to Aaron Top House, you experience beautiful atmosphere, a great wine list. I mean, honestly, accompanying all of that is that we have our beautiful steaks, jet flat fresh fish that we fly in three to four times a week. So you get premier product when you come here to 801. Chef Ian Robertson says at 801 Chop House, customers get excellent service from the friendly staff. They want people to have the best of dining experiences. Chef Ian graduated from Roosevelt High School in Des Moines and traveled to Paris where he attended culinary school. Afterward, he worked in restaurants in France and England, then made his way back to the U.S. Working out in Europe, it's like the big thing that I learned out there was just like really trying to make everything just perfect. Um, in the, I worked at both in France and England. In England, they really pressed, and at the restaurant I worked at, really wanted me, us to work on making sure that everything looked beautiful, everything was perfectly done, and just like the love and amount of passion that they have for their cuisine, it's just unbelievable. It really is in their daily life that they really just love the cuisine from lunch to straight through to dinner. Different cultures obviously are in different places, and then with the culture, food is obviously a very, very big part of it. You know, we all sit down and spend time eating. So, you know, Latin American cuisine differs from, you know, Mexico down to Chile. And then same in America, you know, cuisine from out on the East Coast is different from, you know, your California cuisine as well. And so traveling around and seeing all the different cuisines kind of helps fold it into your repertoire. And so that way you're more knowledgeable about it and you can do different dishes as well. Having fun with flavors is something Ian enjoys. He also likes to buy the food he cooks with locally. 
we always try to run seasonal items. And so with that, you know, we have a seasonal side using seasonal veg. Uh, we bring in nice local corn when it's nicely in season. Same with red peppers, our different squashes as well. Then we try to fold it into our menu and just keep it very seasonal. And then with my fish preparations, we like to change the fish around about once every three weeks. I think the food that we get here in the state is really, really good. You know, the quality of both our beef, pork, I mean, the quality of our produce as well is really good. You know, we have beautiful, rich soil that gives us that great product. If you're looking for a classy restaurant with a chef who has a flair for fun and worldly flavors, 801 Chop House is the place for you. My style is just trying to have fun with it and trying to blend all the different places that I've been and traveled and tasted, trying to blend those cuisines together so you have a lot of fun flavors in your mouth that you wouldn't necessarily normally have on a regular basis. And now we are in the kitchen with Chef Ian. We're going to do some cooking with bison. What are we gonna make first? Uh, first, we're gonna start off with making a little bit of bison burger. What you wanna do is you wanna get your pan really nice and hot. All right. And with our bison burgers, you, this is just pure bison. There's nothing else into it. And it, it's a little bit leaner than most other kind of meats and beefs that we use. All right, so if you if you bit into a bison burger, would you immediately know it was bison, or would you would you have to think, is this beef or is this bison? You would know immediately All that right. you're working with a bison burger as opposed to a beef burger because of the flavor of it. It's a bit more gamey and uh, has a lot more heavy tones to it than the beef does. All right, and it's leaner than, oh, than beef. Significantly amount bit leaner. As you can see here, it's mainly red as opposed to being that mix of kind of like the uh, red and white. Mm -hmm. Right, so you're not seeing the, the fat in there like you do with ground beef. No. All right, it's looking good. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. Why are we doing this? So because it has a, the lower fat content um, than some of the other burgers that you might do, such as lamb, beef, and pork burgers mm -hmm. and stuff, you just need a little bit of oil there to kind of help coast it along and give it some fat. Because as you can tell, when we first started cooking it, not a lot of fat was rendering out of it. Right, right. So this helps give us a juicy burger, like we're expecting, right? Yes, it does. All right. Helps give it that nice, juicy flavor and kind of helps the caramelization of it as uh -huh. well. Well, and I can see some pink along the edge. How do you know when it's done? How do you know when it's done all the way through? In our, in our kitchens, we just like to touch our burgers uh -huh. just to kind of see where it's at and see how far along it's coming uh -huh. in the cooking process. And with bison, you know, because it's a leaner meat, you don't want to cook it as far because the further you cook it, because it doesn't have as much fat content in it, um, the drier your burger will be. So you want to cook your bison burger more between like your medium rare and your medium stage okay. as opposed to, you know, your medium plus. All right, so you want a nice pink on the inside. Then. Yes, you do. All right. When you touch it, what are you feeling for? How do you know it's done? Um, I'm feeling to see how much pressure and resistance it gives back to me. So right now, it's very, it's a little softer. Okay. All right, so which means it's around that rare stage, but here in a few minutes, we're going to get into that nice, beautiful, medium rare stage in which we prefer to like to eat our bison burger. Okay. All right, so you think we're, we're ready to plate this up? Uh, yes, we are. Wonderful. We're just ready to plate it up. Plate. Thank you very much. And you brought along a little bit of a, a little bit of goat cheese for the bun? Yes, I did. So what I have here is just a little bit of soft goat cheese that we kind of like let temper. And it just kind of spreads on there real nice and easy. Yeah. Which makes it very creamy. Like, very creamy. And so we'll have our goat cheese here that we'll put across a nice both sides of our bun. All right. Just 
chão. Ai, meu Deus. Vamos dar uma linda espécie de bird. Você vê a cor bonita nessa outra lado também. Sim, isso é lindo. É isso que estamos procurando. Então, vamos ter a nossa linda espécie de bird. E vamos fazer isso. Com apenas um pouco de frango de frango. E com algumas arrugulas também. Fabulous. Which just kind of makes it into a very nice little burger we have here. Perfect. That is beautiful. Oh, Chef Ian, thank you so much. You're welcome. We made a beautiful bison burger, and now what are we going to make? Now we are going to make these beautiful little bison tenderloins right over here. We have a little English pea puree, some roasted heirloom carrots with a whole grain mustard Dijonese, and then also just a small bit of a blackberry reduction oh, as well. Oh, yum, yum. So you say tenderloin. I mean, are there cuts on bison just like cuts on beef? Uh, yes, you can still get your same cuts on bison as you would beef. Obviously, unlike beef, your tenderloin, your, off the bison is a lot smaller. And so with that, you know, it comes with a, like a little bit more expensive price tag with it, but the flavor of the bison and what you get from it is really nice. Mm -hmm. When your pan's nice and hot, just once again, you use a little bit of oil to kind of help toast your bison along with your nice cooking. Get that in there. Clean up. Then, We'll also heat up a little bit of that lovely pea puree. All right, and pea puree, is this just peas, or is there anything else in there? Um, what we have here is just peas, water, with just a little bit of butter as well. OK. And that will kind of help. The butter helps give it a little bit of fat, so that way it well, has a bit a more flavor. a lovely green, too. And the blackberry Please. reduction, so is there sugar in there? Or? Uh, here is just a very little bit of sugar. What I like to do is try to keep most of the things real natural without any artificial flavor. So I just add a little bit of sugar to it, but mainly it's just naturally blackberries just cooked down um, with a little bit of uh, red wine. All right, nice. Okay. And then we have our lovely little heirloom carrots as oh, well. Oh, those are gorgeous carrots. So we're just gonna add in here. We're a lovely bison. That way it kind of helps get that bison flavor. And they both become nice and roasty. And how do you know it's time to flip? What are you looking uh, for? I'm looking for that nice sear on oh, that one side. That's beautiful. That beautiful caramelization there where the proteins have really come together. I and mean, then every once in a while, you know, with it, you'll need just a touch more oil as well. All right, we'll just season our carrots just a little bit. Is that a danger of, of letting it dry out because there's so little fat? Um, yes. You know, you can dry it out very easily, and so that's one of the things you have to be, kind of be very careful with when you're cooking your bison and or your leaner meats, such as like elk mm -hmm. and lamb venison as well, that they can dry out quite quickly. All right, and so you're adding in oil. You could add in other kinds of fat, too. Yes, butter also would be another great kind of fat. Mm -hmm. You know, I love butter, as most of us do. <laughs> yes. And so you can always add tons and tons of butter if you'd like. But, you know, for me, I just like a little bit of canola oil, so that way it's a little cleaner flavor. All right, yeah, I mean, I know people will add in uh, a pork fat or something like that, but that would kind of mask the flavor a little bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, and what I like to do is really kind of highlight the flavors in which I'm going for, you know, try not to have anything mask another flavor, and all of them kind of work harmoniously together to kind of enhance and shine my uh, bison tenderloin. All right, that looks great. And you're going to compose a beautiful little plate here, right? Yes, we are. And so, you just have a lovely little pea puree. Then we're just going to put down just real nicely across the plate. All right, see? Heaven, now what we're going to also add is just a little bit of our mustard. Okay. You know, just real nice, 
helps go with the bison and accent that bison real nicely. Is that a spicy mustard or? Um, it's just like a little Dijonese, so it's okay. a little mustard mixed with a little bit of mayonnaise nice. as well. Okay. Yeah. Here's our lovely bison. We'll just place that right on top of our mustard. And then here we have our lovely roasted. Oh, and they look great. Heirloom carrots as well. It's very nice, very simple. And then what we have here is a lovely bit of blackberry as well. We'll just kind of use those just to garnish our plate with, and then have a touch of red sauce with it. Oh, that is gorgeous. Just the little baby carrot greens as well, which most people kind of like throw to the side and don't consider actually using. But they work as beautiful little garnishes that we use in the restaurant all the time. Oh, that is just beautiful. Chef Ian, thank you so much. Ah, you're welcome. In 1919, Iowa was the sixth largest grape producing state in the United States. Production fell off dramatically in the mid 1900s thanks to prohibition and widespread use of 2,4-D herbicide. But these days, the wine and grape industry in Iowa is enjoying an amazing comeback. The Western Iowa Wine Trail is made up of six wineries that work together to host several events each year. Their locations allow visitors to stop at multiple wineries in one trip. This event is our signature event, the Grillin' with Iowa Wines, where people get grilled food and wine at each place. A real fun one is in um, February or March, um, falls around Mardi Gras time. So people go around and collect beads and Mardi Gras masks and have Cajun food along the way. All the stops on the trail provide unique and welcoming experiences. Often, grapes are grown, picked, processed, fermented, and bottled all in one location. Many have added event centers to host weddings and other large gatherings. The grapes that grow well here produce a wide selection of wines, red and white, sweet and dry. It's the different varieties plus the special characteristics of the land that produced the unique wines of this region. Well, they say that this lust soil is so good for grapes because grapes like not to get their uh, vines wet. So they like kind of some dry, southwest sloping um, hills that drain easily. The ones that, you're, that most people have heard of, we do not grow those. Those are vinifera grapes, the Merlots, the Cabernets, all of that. Everything that we grow is either an American Labrusca, a Native American variety, or a French-American hybrid. So the reason being is that although our growing season is long enough, uh, the minimum winter temperatures uh, is too low to grow some of those vinifera grapes. Our most popular wine right now is a wine that is called One Night Stand, a sweet, fruity Catawba wine. When we started this venture, I really liked the dry wine, so that's what I made a lot of. And my wife said, you need to go back to what we used to do here, make the sweeter Concord, make the sweeter Catawba. And long story short, she was right, I was wrong. And our top selling wine is the sweet Catawba wine. So I think you're gonna find maybe some fruitier, fruit forward wines, maybe a little more flavor. Um, they're just unique. They're not like the, the grapes that are grown in Australia or California. So it's just kind of a whole new world for people. The vintners on the Western Iowa Wine Trail are passionate about celebrating our state's grape growing history and are proud to play a part in bringing it back. So this is really, this is our life's work. So those of us in this industry in Iowa, this is really what I feel a lot of us were meant to do, was let's figure out how can we make world-class award-winning wines from Iowa grown grapes. Oh, 
it's fun, number one. So it's a lot of fun celebrating that history, uh, looking at what those who came before us did. It's, it really is, to me, it's the ultimate in value-add agriculture. So we're, we're, we're in ag, we're growing grapes, but we're also, it's very much an entertainment business. People come here, they want to have a good time. So it's always fun when people come to your place and are smiling and want to have a good time. That's it for this week's show. Thank you for going on this culinary journey with us. I'm Charity Nebbe. We'll have more food adventures next time on Iowa Ingredients. All of us at Iowa Ingredient are fans of all things celebrating Iowa food. And in 2015 and early 2016, we visited the terrific restaurants, farms, and other food events featured on this program. But circumstances can change, so we encourage you to call ahead if you're planning a trip of your own. We hope that you get the opportunity to indulge in some of Iowa's delicious flavors and to visit some of our unique destinations. Thanks for watching. Funding for Iowa Ingredient has been provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, a grant from the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust, Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business. Located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines, details are at embassyclub.com. New Pioneer Food Co-op, offering local and organic groceries in Iowa City, Coralville, and Cedar Rapids. Everyone's welcome to shop the co-op, where local and organic isn't just a corner of the store, it's the cornerstone of everything they do. Iowa Community Foundations, an initiative of the Iowa Council of Foundations, connecting donors to the causes and communities they care about. For good, for Iowa, forever. Details at iowacommunityfoundations.org. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service.